prettier every day. Tell me about the beauty contest you won. Find a place to eat? I was unlucky. I did. Where? If I wasn't a good friend of yours, I'd tell you. How's our boy? Playing it cool. How's it, Steve? Uh... Nice white walls to mark the days off on. Maybe I'll draw pictures of guys with funny faces. Let's see your face. You'll be outside soon. You can forget about going back to a cell when this thing is over. That is, uh, if everything works out all right. How would you like to have your lid opened? I brought you some smokes. Cops always give me something I can't use. I don't have a match. What did you want me to bring you? A sack of jelly beans? Good luck, Steve. Where's the martini I ordered? Time to prepare you for surgery. I'm on a holiday till Monday. Take your toys and get out of here. There's been a change in plans. Dr. Marston's operating tonight. I said Monday. I was born on a Monday. I might as well go on one. Like dirty laundry. Miss Milliken on the Raleigh case. Do you know of any changes in plans? I see. All right, thank you. Surgery still scheduled for 8 o'clock, Mr. Raleigh. Tell him not to break up that card game for me. I only work here. Yeah, well, they're not going to work on me till Monday. This sedative will relax you completely. Stab yourself with it. I said no. You're making this difficult, Mr. Raleigh. When I say no, that means get out of here. Flanagan. You got trouble? Yeah. He decided to postpone his operation. Bad decision. We don't upset the doc's schedule. You shouldn't have done that. Go have him ready for surgery. Bend your knees, please. Hey, Doc. Yes? I never saw how I came into this world. I'd like to see how I go out. What do you mean? Give me a mirror. Let me watch. You won't see it for long. 
I said I'd like to see it. Bring him a mirror. Sponge count correct, Doctor. Instrument count correct. Fine job, Dr. Marston. Fine. Thanks. Might have made a little history tonight. Well, I hope so. He was awake only once. Complain about pain? No, sir. Continue with the same medication. Mr. J. Wall to see you, Doctor. J. Wall? Who's he? Wants to talk with you about Steve Raleigh. Send him in. Dr. Marston? Have a seat. I came about Steve Raleigh, Doctor. How soon can he have visitors? Well, not for some time. Insurance investigator, huh? That's right. People hawk fur coats they haven't paid for. Burn up businesses that are on the rocks, you know. I thought we'd kept this fairly quiet. How did you find out that Mr. Raleigh was here? I know a policeman. Well, what do you want to see him about? I heard you're making an honest man of him. I thought I might get some honest answers for a change. He's in no condition to talk to anyone. He's just been through a very serious brain operation. Yeah, I can imagine. To make that guy honest, you'd have to cut off his head. It's our theory that certain uh, instincts, in this case the criminal type, can be removed by surgery. Whether we've been successful or not remains to be seen. In any case, I doubt whether Raleigh will ever be of much help to you. What do you mean by that? If we're successful, he's lost his memory. Then I'll refresh it for him. There's a small matter of $130,000 he stole last Christmas Eve. That payroll was insured by my company. He can't be tried for that crime again. And when he agreed to this operation, he was paroled in my custody. Right now, Raleigh doesn't even remember his own name. He believes that his loss of memory is due to a traffic accident. It's important that nothing disturbs him and that no one brings up his past. I don't think my company will see eye to eye with you on that. Good day, Mr. J. Walt. OK. But I've got a one-track mind and 130,000 reasons to stay on that track. What do you call this gadget, Doc? Polygraph. Sounds like something that eats crackers. It's commonly called a lie detector. Oh. You want me to lie to you, Doc? No. It's just a routine test. Well, get your contraption going. What's your name? James Blake. How old are you? 34. How do you know you're 34? 
Miss Quist told me. Where were you born? I don't remember. Where did you live? I don't remember that either. What kind of work did you do? By the looks of these, I never did a day's work in my life. Have you ever been in jail? No, but I kissed a girl once. You don't need your machine for that. Check with Miss Quist. Any more questions, Doc? Just one. Does $130,000 mean anything to you? Yeah. That's a lot of money. Morning, Blake. Hi, Doc. How do you like my work? Very professional job. Ever do any gardening before? Not that I can remember. Well, keep off the good work. Oh, say, Doc, I was curious about something. Yes? Well, I'm in pretty good shape now. I eat like a horse, feel as strong as one. How long do I stick around? Not very much longer. Oh? Well, what do I do when I leave? What would you like to do? <laughs> Gee, I don't know. Maybe I ought to stick around and do your gardening for you. I don't know if I can do anything else. I was kind of hoping that later I could help you out in the lab, but... Well, that's daydreaming, I guess, huh? Without dreams, men would be pretty lost in this world. You can stay here as long as you care to. Thanks, Doc. How much longer we have to watch him? What are you kicking about? You're sitting in the sun, aren't you? Last month, you were pounding the pavement. Good looking. Some friends to see you. Hey. Blake's getting away. What's this all about? Are you kidding, Steve? Steve? My name's James Blake. What do you know? Who grabbed the wrong guy? <laughs> we also picked up a tail in case you guys are interested. Look, this is no time to break the car in. The law's behind us. Come on, step on it. enough. What's this all about? We'll tell you. Somebody's going to be awfully embarrassed. You haven't changed, Steve. Look, I don't know who you guys think I am, but it's the sense you got your wires crossed. Steve, is this a gag? You know something? I think he's playing it straight. Yeah, tried to be funny in the car. Had me in stitches, a real comic talent. Look, why don't you call Dr. Marston at the clinic? He'll tell you who I am. Steve, are you joking? It's Peg. For you, too, isn't this a little late for introductions? Uh, maybe he's off his rocker. Yeah. yeah, he's a nut. A rich nut. He can't remember anything. But he will. 
When I get through with him, he'll be able to count from one to 130,000. We had to take the silent tree from, from you when you were in stir, but you're not in stir now. So start remembering your old friends and tell us where you hid that dough. Steve, we all took the same chances, right? I ask you, isn't it fair we all have the same cut? What cut? What chances? I never saw you guys before in my life. Now, get out of my way! No, Lefty! Be that by yourself a mink coat! Grab his arms! OK, come on, honey! Come on, Steve, don't make it tough on yourself. Just tell us where the money is, and we'll all be friends again. There never was a time I couldn't have taken you apart. But you fancied it up with talk. Well, for a year now, I've been doing the talking. And it's worked out pretty good. And now for your afternoon edition of the news. Police authorities are investigating the disappearance of Stephen Rawley, now going under the alias of James Blake. Transferred from state prison to the Marston Clinic for some undisclosed treatment, Rawley made his escape today after a running gun battle through the city. Rawley, or Blake as he now calls himself, was serving a 10-year term for armed robbery. A general alarm has been broadcast, roadblocks set up, and police warn that he is probably armed and in the company of three unidentified men. Officers have been cautioned that this man is dangerous. That's crazy. Also dangerous is the fire that swept through a furniture warehouse at... You see, Steve, you're a very popular guy. Everybody's trying to get you for a personal appearance. Seems we were all having a little talk, weren't we? I've done all the talking I'm going to do for now. Don't make me dot the eyes. Now, Lefty. Let me try. OK, try it your way. Take him in there. Come on, Steve. Go on, Steve. Get a little memory exercise. What do you mean? You're running them ragged. They're making lots of threats, but take it from me, they don't know what time it is. Well, thanks for stepping in when you did. He wasn't kidding with that cigar. He really meant to use me for an ashtray. Oh, Steve, you don't know what it's been like with Lefty. First cursing about you, then chasing me around the furniture. He didn't catch me, though. Well, I guess for that, he'd need a Cadillac, huh? You don't really believe that. I don't know what I believe. This hasn't been the happiest day of my life, exactly. Day isn't over yet. Well, they feed you at the hospital. Do you only count so many? What do you want me to do, turn somersaults? Where are we? <laughs> oh, Steve, stop it. Look, there isn't very much time. You tell me where to find it. In the meanwhile, you keep stooling them with that wonderful act of yours. And I'll go out and buy the tickets for anywhere that you say. Come back here and we'll break away. Got everything here. I brought all your clothes over. For the tenth time, listen, if you want, I'll make a record They'll of it. break I... in any second. Where did you hide the money? What money? You really think I'm lying, don't you? It's all yours. that window, Steve. This calls for a $50 raise. I'll sell for it. I'm out. Boss, no re-raise? I don't want to be greedy. Besides, we're only playing for Marcus. If I win too much, I may never see the dough. 
With me, a gambling debt is a debt of honor. For me, an hour you is a piece of paper. If you've got one and a dime, you can ride the streetcar. Two. Two, huh? Mm -hmm. I will check. Twenty-five. Twenty-five, huh? Would a pair of aces impressive? No. No. If I had three of them, would it depress you? It would that. <laughs> How come you suddenly got so lucky? Uh, guess it's my day. Give me them cards. I want to count them. What's the matter? Don't you guys trust me? We trust you. You don't even trust you. We know you too well. You always cheat. How can I cannot cheat in a three-handed game? It ain't easy. You even cheat yourself in solitaire. Ah, oh, look, fellas. I'm going down to the... Get off the line. When we're finished. You know, come to think of it, Arnie, I didn't see no ace of hearts. I'll know in a minute. Madam, please get off the line. Well, I got a little news for you. There's only 51 cards in this deck. There's one missing. Well, what is this? Russian dressing? How did that get there? Now eat it. Oh, I left it. Eat it! What are you gonna do? Call the cops? How long do you think you can keep me here? Till you get smart. And you weren't very smart picking up that phone. You heard the radio. The cops are looking all over for you. When they find you, they'll throw away the key. I don't remember. I don't remember anything. Then we'll have to beat it out of you. Now, you wouldn't want us to do that, would you, Steve? Can't you remember nothing at all? No. Not even this. Shoot, Steve, because it was a beautiful caper. No small gas station job. Take it from me. It was splendid like a battle. Believe me, Steve, no five-star general could have rigged it better. Interested? Yeah, very. OK. Listen closely so you don't miss any details. I remember the job like we'll pull it this afternoon. You figured it, so it wouldn't be a slip-up. There wasn't. You picked Christmas Eve for the job because this factory was going to distribute a big cash bonus to its workmen.
believe you. But I've heard enough. It's funny, we ain't heard enough. Your silence has given me a near ache. We were all pretty upset, Steve. Lefty kept taking chances going to see you. And you weren't very hospitable. How's Peg? How's the dough doing? I said, how's Peg? Why don't you find out for yourself? What'd you do with the money, Steve? I invested it in real estate. Every lot has a view of Catalina. Huh? All right, I threw it down a sewer. What is all this? I'm getting awful tired of you coming up here every month asking the same question. If it wasn't for this wire, you'd be wearing my hands for a necktie. Are you running the store now? Well, you ain't gonna wait 10 years. As long as I'm up here, consider the money's in escrow. Incidentally, how's it pay? When we heard you'd been moved to the clinic, we decided we could take care of you better than they could. Look, you've tried everything to make me remember. I tell you, nothing rings a bell. Hey, Lefty. Yeah? Remember the suit Steve had on when we pulled that job? Sure, a dark brown one, kind of nifty. So look here. He's wearing a light one. Yeah. So he must have changed his clothes before he got pinched. That means he went home. So that's where you hid the dough. Look, I tell you, I don't, don't know. Don't tell us nothing. Let's go and get it. Cookie, get the car. You don't right. mind joining us, do you, pal? And if I said no? Somebody pull the plug. Maybe I better get a hose. Reading the papers. How's stock market? You want to talk about them, huh? Why not? Is something sacred? Somebody can put a monument up to him? Let's get something straight, Freddy. He's no good. He was never any good. Remember what he did to me the last night we were in here? It's just a lover's quarrel. Don't make me laugh. He never loved me. Or just something for him to hang presents on. He gave you plenty of them, that's a cinch. Scalps, Freddy. Just scalps. Advertising. Wanted to show off in front of a bunch of cheap hoodlums. Give me another one. Oh, Peg, take it easy, will you? I'm gonna have to carry out of here. Some Sir Galahad I wound up with. Oh, Fred, what are you doing? You hate yourself. I usually take it out of my wife. Big help you are. People always feel better when they talk to me. That's why I ain't got television. Looks like Steve didn't pay his rent. Let's take a look inside anyway. Okay. Thanks. 
key. A piece of paper with the number 1133 on it. Stuck in the bottom of that drawer with tape. Means something to you, doesn't it, Steve? 1133, Steve. And this place, too, Steve. The Deans. Remember the times we had here? Steve, there was a pitch of fag in there once, wasn't it? Remember the bar? The four stools covered with leather? Remember the wonderful parties? Remember the fun? And that crack in the ceiling. You're always trying to get it fixed. Remember? <laughs> Stop it. This guy understands only one language. I speak it. Is that your handwriting? I don't know. Give me a pencil. Here. Write those numbers again. I'd say that's it. Hey, he's gone! some blood, Steve Rawley's. I was the guy with the 30 pieces of silver. When you got around to pay him, he was only 15. You want the rest? Papers say he skipped. I don't know where. He had a girl. Good-looking fellow like Steve probably had a stable. I'm being real nice, friend, so don't stretch it out. Some bars are horizontal, others stand up straight. You got nothing on me. Don't start me looking. All right. She's a blonde, five six. Something you wouldn't be ashamed to walk down the street with. Where does she live? I don't know. She likes martinis. That's bad if you don't follow up with food. That she gets across the street. Hey, ain't you forgetting something? Oh, sure. Here's a quarter. Beer. Exeter, one, one, three, three. Mean anything to you? No. Yeah. No. Farrington, one, one, three, three. No. No, lay off. I, I never saw the paper before. I'm getting fed up with you. If you don't come through pretty soon, you're gonna need new front teeth. Wait a minute. Maybe it ain't a telephone number. Maybe it's a street number. It could be a street number, couldn't it, Steve? Or a social security number. This is a waste of turn. What are you trying to do? Kill him? It could happen. Get a load of this. He had it hid. It was stuck under a drawer in his own house. Hey, this could be the combination of a safe. Take him and put him to bed. Don't just stand there. Right away, ma'am. All right, ma'am. Get the size of that mouth, boys. And it's a mouth that can yell. And don't you forget it. How do you expect him to tell you anything in that condition? Oh, get lost. Okay, take him inside. He'll keep. He's there, all right, room 204. But he isn't having a picnic. 
I don't get you. There are some people with him as interested to know where he hid the money as we are. I don't think we should stand in their way. So what do we do? Wait, watch. I'll be back in a couple of hours to relieve you. If you don't mind, slave, and look at that building once in a while. All you have to do to open it is turn the knob. Well, if it isn't the man who makes new heads. Have a seat, doctor. Used one of these for years, since somebody told me to cut my throat. Mr. Jaywald, where is he? Why don't you ask the police? They couldn't tell me anything. No one realizes the man's doubtful condition. Police are looking for an ex-convict, technically he is, because he was paroled in my custody. I'll tell you what he is. He's Steve Raleigh, a hood with a record as long as your arm. And I'll tell you something else about him. He'll remember that money and try to get it. You may have cut out a piece of his brain, but you didn't operate on his pockets. You're not a very cooperative man. It's not a very cooperative world. My only interest in this case is the welfare of my patient. After I get the money, he's all yours. You holding his hand? What's it to you? Maybe I'm jealous, or maybe I figure you're trying to hug the inside rail. What are you talking about? Get out of here. Haven't you done enough for one day? If you're trying to cozy up to him and cut us out, it won't work. Steve's in real bad trouble, Peg, so don't count on him. You better play it across the board. In any race, you'd run last. Gotta get away. Yes, darling, we'll both get away. The police, they're chasing me. I gotta get away. Don't. 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 Please. for 
a sweet gentleman. Here you are, handsome. A nice big box of candy for your best girl. You're my best girl. Catch me, put me in a cage. Steve. Huh? Steve, darling, wake up. You were having a bad dream. You all right? I guess so. I never should have left you alone with them. Here, darling, have a cigarette. Why do you do that? You always used to do that. <laughs> Was I that broke? He said you wanted to get down on your smoking. Oh, Peg, Peg. Steve, darling, don't. I'm all mixed up. My brain is in a scramble. Who am I? What am I? It's the beating you took. I'm to blame, darling. I was hurt. I uh, thought you were trying to fool me, too. No. These are nothing. They hurt on top, not inside. And you know why? Because there's... There's nothing inside to hurt. I'm dead. Your friends ought to be arrested for beating up a corpse. If I'd only known you were so sick. Peg, what I was saying just now in that dream, did it... did it make any sense? He said you were being chased. That's right. I was on an amusement pier. It was Christmas Eve. It was like a jungle. I kept running. I don't know why. I was blocked everywhere I turned. And then I was in a post office. I don't know how I got there. They were going to mail me away with a three-cent stamp. And you were in that dream, Peg. You were running the Wheel of Fortune. You were spinning it. I won a box of candy from you. Wheel must have been fixed. Don't you think you better get some sleep? <sighs> Funny, why all this? Why an amusement pier? Huh? Why did I always keep running, Peg? Steve Raleigh was frightened. He was always frightened. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. No. Go ahead. If I'm this character everybody says I am, maybe I'd better find out about myself. You could find it in any police spotter. That jungle you mentioned, Steve, we were both in it. It was a world like a flea circus. Everybody packed in. The scramble for nickels never stopped. We grew tough. Do you want to hear more? Go ahead. I like to hear you talk. You must be feeling better. <laughs> I guess I'll be all right if I can just find my head. One thing. Yes. Whatever else I was. I had good taste. Monotonous, isn't it? Yeah, this is the fifth day. Any action? Oh, one of them went out this morning, got some groceries, came right back. They must have some plan. We're in the unfortunate position. We have to wait. I've waited so long, a little excitement would kill me. When it happens, it won't be little. Don't go playing bingo. It could happen soon. I'll see you. boys. Let me in the game, will you? I, I won't cheat anymore. You think he's sorry? You think he's repentant? Nah, he'll never change. What do you got? 20. 
You win again. You here to talk, Steve? I came to borrow a cigarette. Two of them. Yeah. Take the pack. Thanks. You know, Steve, uh, I'm a businessman. Is that so? Yeah. With businessmen, time is money. Get to the point. I look at it this way. You spend a year on ice. That ought to be worth something. Say, 50% of the take. That's uh, 65 grand net. So let's stop kidding each other. None of us are getting any younger. I don't like being pushed around. So even if I did suddenly remember where I stashed the money, it wouldn't do you any good. I'd still charge you the other 65 grand for damages. Sit down, honey. OK, Steve, you got your smokes. Now go on back in the kitchen and start thinking. You got exactly one hour. If you don't come across by then, well, we'll be out of money and you'll be out of time. Do I make myself clear? Sure. But you better get me when my back is turned. Because I'm going to take at least one of you with me when I go. Gave him a ticket. Don't get in an uproar. Just an idea I had to get him to lead us to the dough. I left the back door unlocked. You what? Where he goes, we go. Wait downstairs. Give us the high sign when they skip. Right. They gave me an hour. What? They're businessmen, didn't you know? And in exactly 60 minutes, they're going to liquidate their assets. Well, they're bluffing. If anything happens, you they'll never find the money. If they work on me once more, I swear I'll... Steve, don't. That's the old Steve, wild and crazy. You said I gave him a jungle, didn't you? I thought I found a new Steve. Look, this is me, whoever I am. Don't try to put a halo around my head. It doesn't fit. Oh, Steve, Steve. Just stick with me, will you? You mean we're going to start running again? We've got to get out of here. I need something to jimmy that door. Maybe this will work. $10. Oh, that's great. I got a ring we could hawk. Oh, no, Peg. Big money. We gotta find that dough. Steve, you can't be serious. Why not? It's mine, isn't it? I stole it. I served time for it. Now it'll give us a clear start. A clear start to where? No, Steve, darling. We can leave town, get work. I can model. We'll make out. Wait a minute. In that nightmare, there was a post office. Could this be a box number? Driver, take us to the post office. Steve, change your mind. The baby is here somewhere. Throw it away. Then we can throw away the past. I have no past. It's a blank wall. Come on. There it is, 1133. Can you tell me who rents box 1133? One, one, three, three. Just a moment, I'll see. Yes, that's uh, rented by Hillside Linen Import Limited. Are you sure? We've had the box for over 15 years. Thank you. Dreams. Next thing, it'll be tea leaves. I must be getting soft in the head. 
We don't need the money. We don't, Anna. I haven't got change of a quarter. The post office was only part of that dream. Most of the time, I was running up and down the pier. It's a long shot, but let's give it a try. Come on. She was in my nightmare. She gave me that laugh every time the police got close to me. Oh, come on. That's where I won the box of candy from you. It was a crazy oh, dream, oh, Steve. Oh. All right, check your packages. Get your packages checked here, 25 cents. 30 cents. I said 25. All right, who's next? Check your packages. Ladies, take the load off your feet. Check your packages. Uh, what, what? <laughs> hey, great little woman I married. Do you think this concession was all hers? When did you leave it, mister? About a year ago, just before Christmas. Well, we don't seem to have it anymore. Well, that check came from here, didn't it? Yeah, it's his scribbling, all right. My script. Look, I tried to tell. No. no, I ain't gonna let this woman get my blood pressure up. I just ain't gonna allow it. Huh. When did you say you checked it? Last year, the day before Christmas. Oh, well, we only hold unclaimed stuff 60 days. After all, what can you expect for a quarter? 30 cents. No doubt we threw it out months ago. Threw it out? Yeah, sure. Yeah, for once, this husband of mine is probably right. Uh, what was it you checked, mister? Yeah. Uh, a package, a box of candy. Please try to find it. Box of... Now, who'd check a box of candy and want it back a year later? It'll get stale. Yeah, like you, after I married you. Boy, did I no, get no, it. No, 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 save your breath, man. You're a woman of your age, you know. You ain't got much of it left. Oh, well, if I haven't it's your fault, you made me do all the work around here. You're the I laziest make man you I ever knew in my life. Hey, hey, now, look, look, wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute, will you? Will you please try to find my package? Oh, yeah, now, what was it you wanted again, Mr. Wood? A package, number 1133. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll take a look. In the back. Look on the shelf in back of the clock. If you can't find anything else, you might be able to find out what time it is. <laughs> Why don't you go back home to your mother, maybe, huh? <laughs> this might be it. We might get lucky. That candy box can turn into another kind of a box, Steve. One they'll bury you in. Nope. Nope, somebody must have ate it. <laughs> Probably her. Very funny. Mind if I have a look? No, sure, go ahead. Get yourself dusty. Thanks. I couldn't reach the top shelf. Lady, check it for a quarter. Okay. All right. 
business. Hey, you're a lucky guy, but that'll cost you a dollar and a quarter storage. Dollar thirty. A dollar thirty. Here, here, here give it a try. Well, come on. Five. What do you know? The candy isn't stale. It's poison. Are you crazy? Maybe. All of a sudden, a dollar is a piece of paper crawling with germs, is that it? If you keep it, I can't go on with you. I'm in love with another man. The guy without change of a quarter? When you're in love, a quarter is just two dimes and a nickel. What's the matter? Uh-uh. <laughs> Company's coming. Come on, we can argue this out in Europe someday. Send me a postcard. Time, Peg? Sure, with popcorn. Where's that meal ticket of yours? I want to punch it full of holes. Look, Steve and that money are somewhere on the pier. Come on, start walking. Going somewhere, Steve? I was. I always got time to speak to you. <laughs> Take that track out like this right.
Pardon me, but do you happen to have $130,000 on you? <laughs> <laughs>